Hello and welcome to this series of setup videos. I am the founder and inventor of Cinefade and I will be going through the setup process with you. We'll be covering all the basics and you can follow along with our user manual where you will find more detailed information about the setup process. When you hire Cinefade through us, all the kit will be delivered in a Peli case and includes a C-Pro lens control system with two motors, the Cinefade filters and all cables and accessories you will need. I have set up here an Alexa Mini with a signature prime lens and an ARRI LMB 4x5 matte box. But you can use any film or digital camera and any Cine lens with any LMB matte box. Our C-Motion Cinefade Vary ND consists of two circular polarizers. One which is motorized to rotate and one which remains static. Place them into the matte box individually or preferably connect them together using the connector pins and magnets. Place the Vary ND into the matte box, making sure the filters are orientated correctly. There are laser engraved markings on the filters indicating the side that should be facing towards the camera and the side that should be facing towards the subject. I'm going to attach the C-Pro motor to the iris, which also doubles as the wireless receiver. If you have a second motor, attach this to the focus. The focus motor is only necessary for lens mapping and can be removed afterwards if you prefer to focus with your own lens control system. If you don't have a focus motor, a workaround solution can be found in the user manual. Next, we're going to daisy chain the motors together. There are various ways of doing this and I'm going to use an angled L bus to L bus cable to connect the very ND with the C-Force motor. A short L bus cable connects the C-Force motor to the C-Pro motor. From the C-Pro motor we need to connect to a power source, which can be either via a DTAP or RS cable, but since we're using an Alexa Mini, I can plug directly into the Mini's L bus connector, which also enables camera control. Once connected to power, the Vary ND will automatically calibrate and set itself to position of maximum light transmission at ND 0.4. This is the C-Pro hand unit. And so you can see what I'm doing, I've attached a camera to the hand unit. In case you're unfamiliar with the C-Pro hand unit, there are four control axes. Focus knob, iris slider, as well as a joystick and a thumb wheel to use for menu navigation or to assign to the very ND filter. Insert the battery here and switch the unit on by pressing the home button. Double press the home button to enter the menu and you can use the touch screen or thumb wheel to navigate through the menu. User buttons one, two and three are freely assignable, as are the menu buttons 1 and 3. I have assigned the buttons to the default Cinefade user settings, which can be found in the user manual. User button 2 activates the Cinefade. User buttons 1 and 3 increase and decrease the Vary ND filter. Menu button 1 sets the iris slider limits, and menu button 3 sets the joystick limits. Let's make sure that the RF channel on the hand unit matches the C-Pro motor. Press the lower button on the C-Pro motor to toggle between RF channels until you reach channel 1. Navigate to Main, Radio, Channel and select channel 1. Next, I'll press the upper button on the C-Pro motor and assign it to the iris. I'll press the button on the C-Force motor to assign it to focus. I've assigned the back button to calibrate all motors, so I'm going to push and hold for a second and wait until all motors have calibrated. Lens mapping is an important step for the Cinephage, in which we tell the system where each T-stop is located on the lens. The software uses this information for exposure calculation, so accuracy is important here. 
Every lens is different and I would recommend that each lens is mapped and tested during a prep day. In the menu, navigate to Lens, Create. We have already calibrated our motors so we can skip this step. The motor direction indicates which side of the camera the motor is mounted on, as seen from the camera operator's point of view. In our case, the motors are mounted on the right side of the camera, and I can use the user buttons 1, 2, 3 to switch between left and right. Hit next to select the lens manufacturer, name the lens, enter the serial number, and choose between imperial or metric scales. Now let's map the focus scale. We do not need this information for Cinefade operation. And to save time, you only need to map a minimum of two positions. But I will map the entire scale, as this will then allow the system to display depth of field information. Use the focus knob to select infinity on the lens and the thumb wheel to find the equivalent value. Press set and repeat for the next mark. Press next and continue on to the iris scale. Move the iris slider to the largest T number position on the lens, being as precise as possible and select the equivalent value with the thumb wheel. Repeat this for every single lens T-stop mark. In case you make a mistake, user button 2 allows you to delete a value, and user button 3 allows you to change the decimal value, like in this case to set the wide open value to a T1.8. After pressing next to complete the iris mapping, select zoom to enter the focal length of the lens and press next again. You should now see all three axes colored in green and can press save to complete the lens mapping. As a last step, navigate to lens, load and find the lens you have just created and load it. We are now able to set up our Cinefade shot. In the hand unit menu, navigate to filter, filter mode, Cinefade mode. The Vary ND will automatically set to its position of maximum light transmission, where it swallows exactly one and a half stops of light, which is around an ND 0.4. Load a lens from your saved lenses by navigating to Lens, Load, and select the lens. And swipe through the displays until you find the Cinefade information display. Double check that the current iris value corresponds to the T-stop marking on the lens. If they don't, you may have to change the motor direction in the menu. Now let's set up a Cinefade shot. First of all, set your exposure using the iris slider. Once you're happy with your exposure, for example, here at AT11, that position becomes the start position and the position of deepest depth of field. Hit the user button 2 to activate the Cinefade mode. Now the Vary ND is slaved to the iris motor, and you can use the iris slider to open up the lens and vary depth of field only. If light conditions change, use the user button 1 and 3 to change the Cinefade start position. User button 3 changes the start position by minus a third of a stop so you're opening up the lens from a T11 to a T8 and two thirds. Alternatively, exit Cinefade mode by pressing user button two again to regain exposure control on the iris slider and find your new exposure setting and Cinefade start position. This time at a T8, press the user button two again to activate Cinefade mode and use the iris slider to open up the lens. When closing the lens down past the start position, the image will become darker because the variable ND filter is at the position of maximum light transmission. To avoid this from happening, set slider limits. With the iris at the Cinefade start position, press and hold menu button 1 and slide the iris from the start position to the desired position of smallest depth of field. Release the menu button 1 and the iris slider is now limited to values between these two points. Vary ND mode is great for controlling the variable ND filter separately and to enable dynamic ND control. This is great, for example, for interior to exterior transition shots where the light levels change drastically and you don't want to ride the iris to maintain a constant exposure.
Whenever the camera is inaccessible, our Vary ND offers precise exposure control without having to change traditional ND filters. In the menu, navigate to Filter, Filter Modes, and select Vary ND Mode. Set the joystick or any other of the four axes to filter control by navigating to Control, Joystick, and select Filter. You can now dynamically control the variable ND filter using either the joystick on the hand unit or user buttons 1 and 3 to change the ND value in a third of a stop. With optical safe range turned on, the ND values are limited between ND 0.4 and ND 1.9, which can be extended up to ND 2.7 with optical safe range turned off. Finally, the Vary ND can also be controlled without a CPRO hand unit. This is especially useful when using the Vary ND instead of traditional full stop ND filters, saving the camera assistant time and allowing the DP to dial in more precise ND values. Press both buttons on the filter together to toggle through the different modes until you reach Vary ND mode. The selection will be applied after 3 seconds and now you can use the buttons to increase and decrease ND value. To transform the Vary ND filter to a simple motorized polarizer, separate the two filters and insert the motorized polarizer into the matte box by itself. This is a great way to control the polarization angle whenever the camera is inaccessible. When shooting cars on a Russian arm, for example, or to achieve interesting effects like animating a change in reflections over time. Either the CPRO motor or the CPRO camion can be used as a wireless receiver. In the menu, navigate to Filter, Filter Modes and select Rotor Polar Mode. Navigate to Controls, Thumb Wheel and select the Thumb Wheel or any other axis to filter control. You can now control 180 degrees of rotation on the polarizer, either dynamically with the thumb wheel or in 5 degree step with the user buttons 1 and 3. Press and hold the user button to speed through the steps. Finally, the motorized polarizer can also be controlled without a CPRO hand unit. Press both buttons on the filter and toggle through the modes until you reach rotor polar mode. The selection will be applied after 3 seconds and you can use the buttons to increase or decrease the polarization angle in 5 degree steps. Download the user manual online at cinefate.com for more detailed setup instructions and tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me and please do send us your Cinefade shots and tag at Cinefade on social media to share your work.